Yes, my friends, they completely jumped the gun on this one. Cyberpunk 2077, the game, is not coming until April of next year, and that's assuming that everything goes right. But given the pace of modern graphics card innovation, um, by the time Cyberpunk 2077 actually does come out, this should still be a god-tier gaming PC. So let's take a look at the Origin PC Genesis, powered by GeForce RTX, in this video sponsored by Origin PC. So I wanna start by going through all the sweet little custom bits of this machine. And there is a good reason for this. This is not just your typical YouTuber flexing all the cool stuff that manufacturers send them because guess what? Origin PC is actually going to be giving one of these exactly like this to one of our lucky viewers at the link in the video description. They have done a bunch of custom stuff here, starting of course with the RGB and overall color scheme of this machine. It's all yellow and blue. It's got these sick UV LEDs that they're using to give it a phenomenal glow when it's not under studio lighting. And they've done a bunch of custom work, both in terms of prints and in terms of acrylic work here. So they've actually put in a custom panel right here, directly above the basement, as well as a fully custom mid plate that's got this like sick circuit board Cyberpunk 2077 design on it. Of course, the liquid cooling is all hardline, two full loops. So there's a single loop for the R9-3900X 12-core AMD Ryzen 9 processor. There's another loop for the dual GeForce RTX 2080 Ti's. And actually, this is cool. So around the time that we filmed this, there was some news about a new SLI rendering mode that we're actually gonna try out on these later on in the video. And each of these loops has a dedicated triple fan radiator down in the basement here. So it's crazy. Like the air up here is that, oh wait, did I say one radiator? Sorry, I completely missed the third radiator. There is a third triple fan radiator up here in the top of the case. This thing's unreal. They've got some uh, like custom prints in the front here. They're like a cityscape. And then you come around to the front and bam, Keanu. Isn't he breathtaking, folks? Simply breathtaking. Moving around to the back, things actually get even more impressive if you are a giant water cooling nerd like I am. There's the other bottom triple radiator and check this out. This has got to be the most beautiful full motherboard sized water distribution plate that I have ever freaking seen. So it manages both of the loops. Usually the reason for these things is so you don't have to run a bunch of tubing inside the system, but they, they went and did that anyway. So uh, whatever, it's fine. So it allows you to fill the loops super easily and drain them. And it even actually has a flow indicator for our blue side here. Now you might notice that ain't spinning. Don't worry, using the Corsair IQ software, I have already verified, uh, once the system actually ramps up, that pump will go faster and the fluid will in fact flow fast enough to, to move the flow indicators. And I thought this was just a cool graphic. No, hiding the cable management. So back here we've got, uh, what is this? So this is an RGB distribution thing. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's from Bits Power. So that's how they're controlling all these five volt addressable RGB strips all over the case. Sick. Then we've got a Commander Pro, which is handling our fan speed control, as well as more RGB, and then one of these uh, RGB hubs for presumably the fans. Uh, oh, and, and another one. And then also, this is a very unusual spec choice, but I totally approve. So they've gone with a two terabyte four series Gen 4 PCI Express M.2 SSD for boot. And then they've actually gone with a two terabyte Fire CUDA. So a lot of cases, especially if you fill them up with uh, radiators, don't have a ton of space for three and a half inch hard drives anymore. And so they've gone with a two and a half inch drive and one of the ones that has a small SSD cache in it. So if you install games on it, whatever you're kind of playing mostly these days is gonna cache up and it's actually gonna load much more quickly than a traditional hard drive. 
We've also got some custom graphics on the little screen that's built into the MSI godlike motherboard. And of course, we've got some Dominator RGB memory with like a purple and blue color scheme on it. Holy crap, I actually missed another radiator here. So, ha! Uh, so we've got four 120s for the CPU loop and then six 120s for the GPU loop. Anyway, that's all fine and good, but it doesn't tell us anything about the gaming performance. Now, I would love very much to fire up Cyberpunk 2077, but unfortunately, Origin and us, nobody, nobody has access to that game yet outside of CD Projekt Red. So instead, we are going to be playing, I don't know, what's, what's the first one that I opened? Ah, yes, Borderlands 3. I love the super outdated SLI logo in the SLI usage indicator thing. All right, so here we go. We're running at 4K, no frame rate limit. We're running in Ultra, and we're running in DirectX 11 because this uh, new tiled checkerboard SLI rendering mode that we're using NVIDIA and Spectre to activate uh, doesn't work in DirectX 12. So what we're looking at right now is the game running at 4K, Ultra Details, DirectX 11, and in SLI. Actually, that is um, surprisingly efficient use of the two GPUs. Around 80 to 85%. I wasn't really expecting that. Man, this game does not look that amazing for uh, <laughs> something that's running at only 75 <laughs> FPS on dual 2080 Ti's. I don't know what it is about their cell shaded, you know, kind of drawn looking art style, but it um, doesn't run great. <laughs> so now we've got this thing fired up. Check this out, SLI CFR. Now, we're not necessarily expecting better performance, but because CFR compared to alternate frame rendering doesn't have to buffer as much, what we are expecting is less hitching and micro stuttering. One thing I wanna know is like tiled rendering. Didn't the last time they did this like crossfire with like master and slave cards? Like, I wonder if they're able to do this because of NVLink. Our frame rate is actually lower, but if anything, I'd say the animations look as smooth or smoother. All right, so now we're in Metro Exodus, and this game ugh, it doesn't scale particularly well in SLI, but at least it's running pretty smoothly, and this is in the more traditional alternate frame rendering mode. Now, this is interesting. It's hard for me to say if it's any more responsive. It does feel fine, but we're actually running at a higher frame rate in this one, which is pretty cool. So we're up in the neighborhood of 100, 120 frames per second with this new rendering mode. To be clear, guys, we don't know exactly what the mechanism of this CFR rendering mode is, and the only way to enable it right now is actually through this NVIDIA Profile Inspector software. So it's not in the NVIDIA control panel, and we're basing everything we're telling you about it on information about previous tile-based rendering methods. I mean, we do know that there is one modern one on the PS4 Pro, which features AMD hardware that just you know, doesn't really tell us anything about NVIDIA. So this is nice. We've got these great horizontal lines here, and there's no obvious place where one tile is refreshing slightly faster or slightly slower than the other one. Honestly, it is really cool going back and playing like really old games that you just, you were too poor to afford good hardware for at the time, and playing them on like totally overpowered modern hardware and just be like, oh, huh. So this, we're actually getting great SLI utilization and super snappy responsiveness. We've got what? Yeah, 90 plus percent utilization on both of our GPUs, 146 FPS, and this is 4K Ultra. And this game looks pretty darn good for such an oldie on this kind of hardware. And finally, this is a really nice thing about modern AMD gaming machines is that they can do more than just games. So we just ripped through the BMW Blender render in uh, two minutes and four seconds and we were running at 3.9 gigahertz on all 12 of our cores. So that's all 24 threads at the same time. Now our temps, we're not amazing, but what you guys might have noticed throughout filming this video is we've actually had this dialed into the quiet profile in IQ. So everything from our fans to our pumps has been barely even spinning. So all we have to do is kick things up a notch. I mean, I guess we don't really have to though because 80 degrees is still enough to be boosting up to 3.9, but we could, like if the weather was hot. So in conclusion, this thing is absolutely sick. And if you want a chance to win one, 
And we're going to have the information for that linked down below. Also linked below is our store, lttstore.com. And a link to another video you might want to check out. So there's some really cool stuff happening with displays and SLI and G-Sync. So we actually did a video on how NVIDIA and LG brought G-Sync gaming to OLED TV. So you guys are going to want to check that one out, especially if you win this thing, because that would be a match made in heaven.